So hello and welcome to Solar Alberta's 2024 Solar Show, our 10th annual Solar Show. This session is called Solar 101 for homes and businesses. Please note that we have enabled closed captioning for this presentation. You can turn the captioning on in the toolbar at the bottom of your Zoom screen. We will be recording this session and making it available on our website and YouTube channel following the show. My name is Heather McKenzie and I am the Executive Director of Solar Alberta. I would like to take a minute to acknowledge that I'm hosting you today and working day to day in Amiskwishiwaskahegan, also known as Edmonton, Alberta, Canada, which is located on Treaty 6 territory and the homelands of the Métis Nation. Treaty 6 territory is the traditional gathering place and home of many Indigenous peoples including the Papa Chase, Nehewak or Cree, Soto, Dene, Blackfoot, and Nakota Sioux, nations whose ancestors have cared for and nurtured these lands since time immemorial. We were delighted to have so many people register for this week and for this event in particular. To start, we'd like to thank Enbridge for sponsoring the 2024 Solar Show and Spot Power for sponsoring this exciting session today. We're happy and grateful to have them as sponsors. Today, we will be hearing from Nicholas Kwan Wong and Maham Aftab following the presentation. There will be a question and answer period in which you can all participate. We will be using Zoom Q&A for questions rather than the chat box. So please enter your questions in the Q&A section. Also, please click on the little thumbs up symbol to upvote questions that you like. The entire session will wrap up in an hour. I'd like to encourage you all to check out our online trade show during the week. We have listed on this slide and in the chat all of the wonderful organizations who are participating in the trade show. To view their exhibitor booths, which include a listing of key solar related services, contact info and video introductions, please click on the link in the chat. Before we move forward, we're going to do a quick poll to get a sense of who we have joining us today. So please take a minute to answer the question that will be popping up on your screen. I actually have two questions this year. <laughs> there we are. So which option best describes you? And then of course, which sessions are you most excited for this week? And while some are still doing the poll, I encourage you to take a minute, pop your name, land acknowledgement, any contact info that you're comfortable sharing in the chat now and throughout the event so that others can look you up on LinkedIn or email you and stay connected. All right, thank you very much for participating. Let's have a look at those results and see what's going on here. Aha, as I suspected, lots of solar curious folks in the room, wonderful. And I'm really excited that there are a number of industry professionals here, so they'll probably be able to put some good information in the chat for you and share their info if you're looking for uh, folks to hire. Uh, also some students with us today, so that's wonderful. And yeah, okay, lots of excitement about this session in particular, so that makes sense. Thank you. All right, just want to share a little bit about who we are. So Solar Alberta is actually in our 33rd year of operation. We're a nonprofit society dedicated to accelerating Alberta's transition to a just and sustainable energy future. We do so by advocating, educating and serving as an industry and community hub for solar energy. Our membership is made up of over 760 individuals and 170 businesses. We also have about 21,000 followers, so I hope you count yourself among them. We provide a number of services, including managing a solar directory through our website. You can see a screenshot of the directory here on the slide and a link to it in the chat. In addition to our website services, we run a number of educational programs and some in-person and online networking events as well. Please note that recordings of all previous recorded, uh, previously recorded solar show sessions and seminars can be found on our Solar Alberta YouTube channel. This spring, we'll once again be running a number of online courses for solar industry professionals or those transitioning into the sector. Our courses are online Tuesday and Thursday evenings on three to five nights over two to three weeks. First up is the economics of grid tied solar PV. You can already register for all of our courses at the link provided in the chat. We are also offering a new buy three, get codes free bundle. This bundle includes our four technical courses on the roster, including uh, electrical codes for solar PV. The link to purchase the bundle is also available in the chat. 
And recordings of these courses are available for sale alongside our paid workshops in the solar training videos section of our website. In addition to providing education about solar, we also advocate for it. We have a number of different campaigns running currently, which include template letters that you are encouraged to send to various decision makers. Please send letters today requesting the Canada Greener, Greener Homes grant be refinanced, requesting an end to the provincial moratorium on renewable power plants, and requesting a number of supports for solar and energy efficiency upgrades to homes and businesses in Alberta. In addition to our template letters, we also have free Rise Up for Renewables lawn signs available for pickup in 11 municipalities around Alberta. You can click on the link in the chat to access all our templates and make a sign order today. Now that you know a little bit about us, just want to take this opportunity to encourage you to join Solar Alberta as a member. Membership is only $35 for individuals and this week only you can purchase an individual or student membership with a 20% discount. The link to become a member is also being placed in the chat. On April 24th, we'll be hosting our annual general meeting. Want to invite you all to sign up as members, attend and elect your new board. There are several vacancies to fill on the board this year. If you are interested in applying to serve on the board, you are welcome to do so now, uh, anytime after now and until February 29th, our website will have the link. And with your help, we're recognizing long-term dedicated contributors to solar in Alberta by gifting them a free lifetime Alberta, Solar Alberta membership. Uh, we'll be accepting nominations until April 3rd and the awards recipient will be announced at our AGM. We are pleased to announce the Solar Alberta Diversity Scholarship. This scholarship is intended for equity deserving individuals. Through the scholarship, we're seeking to promote inclusivity, amplify historically marginalized voices, and encourage diverse perspectives and participation in the solar and solar related sector. Uh, we'll be awarding $2,000 to one individual registered in an Alberta training program that aligns with our mission. We're accepting applications till April 30th and we'll be notifying the successful applicant by May 31st. Uh, eligibility details and the scholarship application are available by clicking on the link in the chat. And we are thankful to Enbridge for also sponsoring this scholarship. Finally, we ask that you consider participating in our 50-50 raffle, which is now over $2,300. The raffle sales will close on Friday and I'm gonna be doing the draw at 5 p.m. during our Solar and Friends mentoring and networking event. Additionally, please consider donating through the crowdfunding link in the chat. The Government of Alberta is matching all donations made through this link. And now, I'm pleased to get this session underway by welcoming our sponsor, Darren Chu of Spot Power. Darren's going to tell us a little bit about Spot Power and then introduce our speakers for the day. Welcome, Darren. I'm passing the mic to you. All right. Thanks, Heather. Um... I'm pleased to be here on behalf of Spot Power and to introduce our Solar Club, which is the premier solar program in Alberta. Uh, the Solar Club is a long-standing program, is one of the original programs in Alberta uh, when it comes to solar-specific retail rates. Uh, it was founded on three goals, the first of which is to uh, improve the ROI on rooftop solar PV systems. Um, the second was to export 100 million kilowatt hours of green energy back into the grid. Um, and then the third is to promote net zero uh, goals province wide, but also for individuals. Uh, our solar club, which is offered through Spot Power, as well as our sister organizations, um, now includes a quarter of all microgen sites in Alberta. So um, of the approximately 18,000 uh, microgen sites across the province. Uh, a quarter of those are Solar Club members under Spot Power or one of our sister retailers. We recently issued our cashback emails, um, and this is a big milestone for us because we can now collectively say that our members are climate positive by about 20%, meaning that um, more energy was being exported back into the grid than was imported. Uh, the total value to our members in 2023 uh, totaled $8.9 million, which is a huge increase over the $5 million that was um, given back to members across 2022. Um, 
and the roughly 2 million the year before. So it's growing quite quickly and we are very proud of the success of the Solar Club um, and everything that our members have achieved. Um, in terms of our, our goal of exporting 100 million kilowatt hours back into the grid by 2030, we are actually quite a bit further along our goal than we expected. Um, so as of the end of 2023, we have now exported 79 million kilowatt hours of green energy back into Alberta's grid, which leaves us just 21 million kilowatt hours shy of our goal. And so for that reason, we are updating our goal now to 250 million kilowatt hours to be exported to the grid by 2030. Um, given the growth of the system and the growth of our program, um, we anticipate we'll meet that goal well in advance of 2030. Um, and hopefully we can set new goals that are higher and uh, stronger. Um, all Solar Club members are also part of our Hummingbird Virtual Solar Community, which is one of the largest distributed solar farms in Alberta. As a distributed virtual solar farm, the Hummingbird VSC leverages Alberta's abundant solar resources and the many homeowners willing to invest in solar PV technology. The Hummingbird virtual solar community now represents the installation of over 100,000 solar modules and a total capacity of approximately 65 megawatts. It's made possible by Alberta's microgeneration regulation, which is one of Canada's most successful renewable energy models. The launch of the Hummingbird Virtual Solar Community marks a significant milestone in Alberta's journey towards a sustainable and carbon neutral future. Um, this virtual solar community showcases the potential of leveraging abundant solar resources and community driven initiatives and underscores the importance of innovative solutions like rooftop solar installations. As Alberta navigates the evolving landscape of renewable energy, the Hummingbird Virtual Solar Community stands as a testament to the power of collaboration innovation and localized efforts to shape a more sustainable energy future. The last thing I'd like to uh, point out um, is that this year we are rewarding Solar Club members in a number of different ways. Uh, the first is we're gonna be doing five draws for $1,000. So for all new Solar Club members who join the program this year, we'll start draws in April and we'll run those all the way through to August. We're also gonna be doing five draws for a thousand air miles reward miles. Uh, terms and conditions apply and you can see our website for detail once we get those launched in a few weeks. Um, and we'll also be doing 250 air miles reward miles on enrollment in addition to the base offer of 20 miles uh, for any new electricity service. I'd like to close with um, a statement about our Solar Club members in that they truly embody the ethos of doing what we can, one kilowatt hour at a time. So once again, Spot Power is pleased to sponsor this year's Solar Show, and I'd now like to introduce today's speakers, Nick Kwan Wong and Maham Aftab. Nick is an electrical engineer who is currently working in the solar industry as a technical consultant. He has over seven years of experience in the Alberta solar industry, ranging from 10 kilowatt residential product projects for homeowners to 200 kilowatt commercial projects for municipalities to 200 megawatt plus utility scale projects for Canada's largest developers. He has an interest in educating the general public about solar PV and is excited to be able to help contribute to shaping Alberta's current and future energy mix. Our second speaker is Maham, who is currently a senior policy analyst at the Alberta Ministry of Energy's Energy Transition Center. She is passionate about the once in a generation opportunity presented by the global transition to a low carbon economy. And within this opportunity, the potential for long-term community transformation. An active community volunteer, she has served multiple terms on the board of Solar Alberta. She also served on the City of Calgary's Climate Advisory Committee and is currently an Energy Futures Lab Fellow. She holds graduate degrees in public policy and economics. I'll now pass the mic over to Nick and Maham to begin, to begin their presentation. Awesome. Thanks for the introduction, Darren, and welcome, everyone. Um, yeah, welcome to Solar 101. It's awesome to see all the interest in the in this presentation. So hopefully we'll make uh, today worth your while there. So today, Sorry, and to to oh, I just yep, want to interrupt for a second. Your screen share didn't quite work. Could you share it again, please? Yep, sounds good. Let's try that. Give me a moment. How's that? 
Nope, not working. Still Let's nothing. See if we can pull it up on my screen. Yep, sure thing. If you want mine. <clears throat> of course, it always works during the tech tech, right? <laughs> of course. Four years and still technical issues, but. No worries. Pull this here. This is when I wish I had a joke prepared of some sort. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so it's coming. All righty. You'll just have to say next slide when you're ready for me, OK? Sounds good. Um, and, and sorry, I think you might have the other presentation shared right now. OK, thank you. Wow. <laughs> My apologies. All good. Is it um, Word's Law or Murphy's Law? Mm -hmm. Don't want to watch the intro twice, do you? <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's see here. If anyone has that link available, you can also drop it for me that I'm just finding it here. Yeah, I guess in the meanwhile, I can kind of just talk in the I background. with the introduction while I pull up the intro slides. Yeah, yeah, sounds good. Um, yeah, I guess in the meanwhile, while you pull it up, uh, just kind of talking about my personal experience in the solar industry. I've been working since 2017, and one of the first few slides we'll pull up here, it's really been amazing to see the growth of solar in Alberta. Um, I kind of came into the industry in about 2017 when it was just kind of starting out. Um, and one of the slides, again, that hopefully will show up eventually, um, it's honestly been like the hockey stick curve of just exponential growth where it's been surprising just to see kind of, yeah, like how far it's come even just in those seven years. So we're really in a time, a really exciting time in Alberta here. And um, yeah, it's awesome that you're all with us here today. Um, so there we go. Finally, we've got the slide up. So yeah, it's coming it over through okay now. Maham. Great. Yes, I'll, turn my, Thanks, Heather. I'll turn myself off so Maham can take the mic now. Awesome. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Maham. Thanks so much for being here. Really excited to get started. Um, so yeah, um, I think we'll just dig in to how solar arrays work in Alberta in general, um, different types of solar systems, and um, just some of the trends that we're seeing in the solar sphere. Um, so like, um, Nick was just talking about, um, there's been exponential growth. Um, it used to be seen as a risky investment, uh, but now it's viewed as a logical and necessary component of our energy sector. And uh, we're going to continue to see growth in things like usage and market share. Um, and this shift in perception is also illustrated um, by the impressive growth that the solar industry has experienced in Alberta. Uh, so when we talk about growth of solar in Alberta, um, we're primarily talking about solar full full <laughs> solar photovoltaics, um, that's solar PV. Uh, and a lot of times um, that's not solar thermal. Um, so solar PV uh, essentially harnesses the sun's light to produce electricity, uh, while solar thermals harness the sun's heat. And that's usually to heat water. Um, solar PV is really taking off in Alberta. Um, and it works well in northern climates because um, it actually has better production capability in the cold. Um, so Alberta is home to a range of um, multiple solar PV system sizes. Um, anything under uh, five megawatts is considered microgen in Alberta. Uh, you've all likely spotted a solar array or two on the homes in your neighborhoods. Um, these residential systems are really small. Um, they're usually around seven kilowatts. Um, microgen arrays under 150 kilowatts are considered small microgen systems and um, larger microgen systems, those are often called commercial systems, uh, can power businesses or, you know, not for profit. Um, as the government of Alberta's microgen regulation explains, uh, all microgen installations in Alberta, whether residential or commercial, um, they have to be sized to produce equal to or less than the annual on-site electricity consumption. Uh, uh, so for example, if your household currently consumes, say, 5,000 kilowatts an hour, oh, sorry, a year, um, you can't install a solar system 
that will produce more than that 5,000 kilowatts a year. Um, and as you can see up on the slide here, um, there's just some examples of large scale commercial microgen from around Alberta. Awesome. So as an engineer, I always like the graph slides. I like graphs, I like numbers. Um, and whenever the graph goes up, that's usually a good thing. Um, but in all seriousness, so this was a graph I was alluding to earlier where we kind of show um, timeline from 2014 to 2023 and the growth of microgeneration in Alberta during that period. Um, and it's really amazing because every, I think I've presented this presentation maybe two years now and every year, like that number keeps going higher and higher. Um, so in 2014, we only had about five megawatts of solar generation with about a thousand micro generators on the grid. And then even to 2021, now there's over a hundred megawatts of generating capacity from about 6,000 homes and businesses in Alberta. And now that's grown over to, to over 200 megawatts. So really kind of in that time frame, you know, since I joined the industry seven years ago, which is relatively short. Um, we've increased the generation capacity by ninefold. So I think really that's driven by how low the cost of solar has been, as well as the interest from the general public, which is amazing to see. And um, we'll kind of see that on the next slides as well. Yeah, so um, keeping with the trend of what we've been talking about so far, um, so we're seeing tremendous growth in Alberta's utility scale systems. Um, and these are systems that have the capacity to generate more than five megawatts of energy. Um, you've likely heard them called solar farms. Um, so all the yellow dots on this map here um, show planned utility scale solar farms. Uh, as you can tell, there's quite a few around the Edmonton area and there's a large number in Southern Alberta as well. Um, we've pulled a few stats uh, to share as a means of highlighting the recent growth of solar farms in Alberta. Um, so in January, 2020, Alberta had 117 megawatt of utility scale solar generating capacity um, not the um, so um, there's uh, there's not that much more that we had on our homes and businesses in Alberta at that time as well um, but by January 2024 that had increased to over 1600 megawatts um, and solar farms are anticipated to add over 20,000 megawatts um, by uh, 2028. Um, so while microgen systems are not allowed to size their systems um, sort of larger uh, than uh, that which would offset on-site consumption over the course of a year, as previously mentioned, um, utility scale solar producers can generate as much as um, ASO or the Alberta Electric System Operator would approve them to generate. Um, and this way they can maximize solar energy generating potential of their site um, and participating um, just like any other uh, power plant in the Alberta energy market. Um, so in order to produce energy at this scale, um, solar farms have to jump through a number of hoops that microgens can just avoid. Um, and just as with any power plant in Alberta, um, they can take years to develop and there's a large amount of upfront capital that is required. Um, but the number of projects that's recently been announced is truly incredible. Um, and having said that, solar still makes up only a small percentage of Alberta's total generating capacity, um, which is why you know, we still have quite a ways to go to meet Canada's goal of net zero electricity by 2035. So we talked a little bit about microgeneration. Um, so that's kind of more rooftop, smaller scale solar, and also the big utility scale solar projects that Moham just mentioned. Um, but in addition, there's kind of a third category of community solar that's also emerging in Alberta. So what community generation is, it's where a group of people come together and they invest in the solar development that's not on their own property. So there's a number of cooperatives, community leagues, and indigenous nations that are leading the charge with community generation in Alberta. So here we've got a nice little picture um, for those of you who kind of have driven in Highway 2 in Calgary, might be familiar with it. It's the Renfrew Solar Carports um, at the Spark Science Center in Calgary. It has 2,292 solar modules, which produce about 1.2 million kilowatt hours of electricity annually. And as kind of a reference, the average home in Alberta is about 9,000 kilowatt hours. So I think if you do the math, it's something like, uh, we're gonna do math live on air here, but I wanna say over a thousand homes, but it's a pretty big system. 
Um, what's unique about it as well is that as a carport, you can kind of see the parking cells are underneath. So pretty cool application of solar PV to turn parking into kind of a generating asset and an asset that can also help kind of protect cars from hail prone areas such as uh, Calgary. Um, so while community generation is still in its early stages in Alberta, um, it does have the potential to allow apartment dwellers, renters, and others who don't have an appropriate roof an opportunity to contribute to solar production in Alberta and experience the associated financial benefits. So definitely a third space community generation um, to look at as well. Yeah, for sure. Uh, so keeping the keeping the hits rolling as far as Alberta's unique advantage is concerned. Um, so when you think about what's driving the growth of solar PV in Alberta, um, there's obviously a lot of reasons why Alberta is where it is in terms of, you know, being the solar powerhouse of Canada. Um, but here on this map, um, you can see that Alberta is next only to Saskatchewan in terms of solar PV generating potential. Um, and that's a big reason of why we're having um, such monumental growth. Uh, we're also the only province in Canada where a private solar power developer can sell power directly to customers through a power purchase agreement. Um, and so that's attracting a lot of investors to the province as well. Um, one more reason for the growth of solar PV, not just in Alberta, but around the world, as Nick mentioned off the top, the cost of solar has gone down instrumentally. Um, and um, between 2010 and 2020, actually, the cost of solar dropped by close to 90%. Yeah, totally. So now we're going to take a moment to talk about how um, a solar system works kind of more on the technical level, just because I, I do think it's genuine, genuinely important um, just to kind of be educated how the technology works. Um, so first of, first of all, as you kind of know, um, solar energy comes from the sun. So what happens is that the sunlight hits the solar modules that are on the roof of your home, um, or maybe they're ground mounted. Um, and in the northern hemisphere, Usually the south facing roofs get the best sun, but the east and west facing roofs also work depending on pitch and other factors. Um, and from there, the PV modules then convert the sunlight into DC or direct current electricity. Um, and it's pretty much a magical process, which we won't get into, but basically it turns solar into electricity. So from the solar modules on your roof, this electricity, <clears throat> excuse me, this electricity then travels to your inverter. So number two on the on the diagram there. And what that little box does is it will convert your DC electricity into AC or alternating current electricity um, that we use in our homes. So this electricity is then fed from the inverter, which is a little box, into your house's main electrical panel. So from there, there's kind of two routes that an electron that's generated from the solar modules and the inverters can take. Um, so the first option is you know, if your house isn't consuming a lot of energy, the electricity gets pushed back to the main power grid because it's not being used by the household. So what this will show up as, and we'll talk about finances in a moment here, but this will show up as a credit on your electricity bill for basically spinning your meter backwards. So the second route that an electron can take from your solar system is that, let's say your house is using a lot of energy then the electricity from the solar system can be used to power everything that's using electricity in your home at that time. So it can be a fridge, it can be a TV, a kettle, or even something like an electric vehicle. So since this energy is coming directly from your solar system rather than the electricity grid, you aren't being charged for that electricity from your, uh, from your retailer. So when you do get solar installed, you, um, your installer will install a bi-directional meter as well. And what that does is it'll keep track of both the energy taken from the grid as well as the energy put into the grid. So that's uh, um, that's your meter spinning backwards, although it's all digital nowadays. So a common question that people have, and it's a really good question, is that will solar get me off the grid? In Alberta, your home will almost always remain connected to the utility grid. And the reason for that is that the grid essentially serves, you can think of it as a reliable backup electricity source that will supply you with electricity um, when you need more power than your system produces. For instance, at night, when it's cloudy, or during the darker winter months. So because of that, the grid connection is important for ensuring a reliable electricity supply. And your connection to the grid is also what enables you to generate credits in the summer when you're overproducing. And that's another revenue source for you. So with that, I think it's time for us to talk 
dollars and cents and see how folks can save some money. So I'll hand it back to you, Mahan. All right, perfect. Great setup, Nick. Um, so uh, here in Alberta, um, we choose electricity providers. So um, naturally, the cost of electricity will depend on the retailer. Um, many Albertans uh, can choose the regulated rate or um, seek a competitive price retailer, uh, some of whom, um, by the way, are members of Solar Alberta. Um, all retailers offer different rates. Um, you can shop around for an affordable rate. Um, one way could be to use the um, utilities consumer advocate cost comparison tool. Um, and that will just help lay out all the different retailers available in Alberta, what their rates are, et cetera. Um, so as far as solar is concerned, um, getting solar for your home will reduce two utility bill components. Uh, the first one there, um, it's gonna reduce the amount you pay for electrical energy um, that you use. So with the properly sized system over the course of a year, you can save close to 100% of the energy charge component. Um, this is the amount that the power company will no longer get paid given that they are no longer making your electricity. Um, the credits generated in the summer will offset your winter months, as um, Nick mentioned, when you're importing and buying electricity from your retailer. Um, second, uh, solar will reduce the variable component of what you pay for transmission and distribution. Um, so these costs cover electrical infrastructure you need to connect to the grid. Um, the transmission and distribution costs obviously have a fixed component, uh, which doesn't change regardless of how much electricity you're using. Um, but solar can help with the variable component, uh, which obviously changes based on the number of kilowatt hours of electricity that you actually end up using. Um, Please note, though, um, that while there's uh, multiple financial benefits to solar PV, um, it still doesn't fully reduce your transmission and distribution costs, so to say, eliminate them, um, as well as the administrative or local access fees, um, because all of those are fixed costs that come from simply being attached to the grid, the fact that you're receiving bills, and then, of course, you're being provided credits, what have you. Um, solar PV is also unlikely to impact your home or water heating charges, which are powered by natural gas for most homes in Alberta. Um, for those specific ones, um, those heating charges um, you, you would um, end up installing an air or a ground source pump for heating or cooling as an option, for example, um, or um, another option is an electric water heat, heat pump um, that, of course, you could power through your solar. Um, you can also look into installing a solar thermal water heating system, um, but obviously um, those might end up using roof space that you could potentially use for solar PV. So that's another consideration. Um, your electrical retailer could also offer a solar specific retail plan through which you could opt into a variety of electricity rates, which would tend to be higher during the summer, lower during the winter. Um, and that can be beneficial because it allows you to export electricity from your home to the grid at a higher rate when your system's generating more electricity in the summer um, and pay less in the winter uh, when you're not generating as much electricity. All right, thanks, Maham. So if you're interested in a solar PV system for your home, I think the take home message is that ultimately it's a home improvement that pays for itself. Um, the solar modules are usually warranted for 25 years for performance, and they can often produce up to 40 years. In fact, a lot of, um, I work with a lot of utility scale solar and a lot of the big developers, and we're talking, they're pouring like hundreds of millions of dollars of investment in these. They're um, modeling, you know, 35 year um, finance, financial lifetimes for these projects. So it's a long-term investment, but it does um, pay for itself. Um, so there's quite a few benefits in mind to think about when um, considering the return on investments overall. So as you can kind of see on the slide, a typical home install is going to cost somewhere on, on the range of $10,000 to $30,000. Um, and the payback is about seven to 15 years, depending on the size and the cost of the array, the amount of electricity you consume and what financing mechanisms you have in place for payments. Um, so oftentimes a good installer will help you calculate the estimated payback time as part of your initial quote process. We'll talk a bit more about uh, finding installers in the, one of the future slides there. Um, but uh, yeah, the, the overall payback depends on a lot of different factors and it's kind of hard to say. So really it depends on your home, your roof, um, what you're paying for electricity, 
where you are in the province, et cetera, et cetera. So again, that's kind of where you can really leverage the installer to help you um, calculate that. As well, you can improve on the estimated payback time of 7 to 15 years um, by reducing your electricity consumption or performing energy efficiency upgrades after your solar installation has been completed. And that's just a function um, of how your, your system is sized with the current microgeneration regulations. One additional consideration, more of an auxiliary benefits, um, is the property value increase. So while we don't have much data in Canada yet regarding home resale value with solar on your house, um, some research in the U.S. currently indicates that homes with solar will typically sell for about 4% more than those without. So there is some data to support the argument that, um, hey, you know, people value solar and it helps with the resale value. Um, so finally, again, kind of hitting home the facts that, you know, this is a generating asset, you know, after 7 to 15 years, once your system is paid back, paid back, everything after is just gravy, it's just money in your pockets. And again, because, you know, these, these modules are often warranted for 25 years or longer for bifacial, um, they are a long term improvement to a house. And so I think, again, the take home message is that it is an improvement that pays for itself. Awesome. So um, an installation of ten to thirty thousand um, dollars can potentially be a lot for Albertans to afford. Um, so the good news is that there are new low and no interest um, solar financing programs um, that can help with that. Uh, so in, a, in, in several municipalities around Alberta, um, CEIP is being implemented. Um, that's the uh, Clean Energy Improvement Program. And uh, it's Alberta's version of a program that's often called uh, PACE, uh, that's P-A-C-E, um, in other jurisdictions. Um, so it's a financing approach uh, which will allow for solar or energy efficiency upgrades to be financed through property taxes um, and have the cost of the upgrade tied to the property instead of the property owner. Um, so if a municipality has um, CIP financing in place, um, potential solar owners um, sometimes don't need to put any money down um, and they can begin to pay back the cost of the solar installation on a monthly basis. Um, that's generally over 20 years um, with really low interest rates. Um, additionally, um, with the program, um, the monthly payment can typically be passed on to the next homeowner if the uh, new homeowners move in before the previous homeowners have completed the payment. Um, many CAIP programs will pay out 50% for upfront costs, and then they'll pay the contractor directly for the remaining cost when the project is complete. Um, sometimes um, there can be additional costs associated with the solar array. Um, let's say your roof or electrical wiring, um, which might need to be upgraded or replaced. Um, in the case of CEIP, um, these can often be partially included in the financing as well. You can check out their website, uh, myceip.ca, uh, for more information about the program and um, be also able to check where your municipality is within the program's adoption process. Um, as well, um, there's also the uh, Canada Greener Homes Loan and the Canada Greener Homes Grant for $5,000 towards solar. Um, so the Greener Homes Loan is a zero interest option which um, is rolling out alongside the um, grant that you can pay back over a 10-year period. Um, this option only covers 15% upfront at this time, um, and the rest will be reimbursed to the homeowner about three months after completion. Uh, more information, once again, you can find it on the internet uh, by searching for um, Canada Greener Homes. Um, if you're doing a deep energy retrofit um, and need more than either of these programs is currently providing, um, you could also combine them for a total of uh, up to $90,000. Awesome. So yeah, I guess now just kind of wrapping up the presentation here, you've learned a little bit about how it works, a bit of a whirlwind tour. Um, so you're educating yourself, which is awesome. So what's kind of the next step? Well. I think the next step really is to find an installer so that you can talk more, learn about your specific, uh, you know, situation and those financial uh, modeling that we talked about. Um, and conveniently, we have a solar installation um, directory on our Solar Alberta website at www.solaralberta.ca. So on the website, there's a few resources that'll help you. Um, you'll find both the map featuring installations near you as well as a directory that lists over 170 of our Solar Alberta business members. 
And there you can read about how many other systems various companies have installed and how long they've been in business. And just in general as well, I know Heather was kind of plugging the website a lot at the beginning, but it's honestly a great resource. There's a ton of um, free webinars, educational courses, and again, that solar directory on there. On our website as well, you can submit a request for proposals or quotes. Um, generally, we, we would say it's good practice that you try to talk to at least three companies. And as well, you'll want to have a look through the quotes to determine how long the warranties are for their products, their work at, and their experience, as well as what their process is for operations and maintenance. Um, inverter warranty is usually from the manufacturer for about 10 years. Um, modules themselves are also usually warrantied from the manufacturer for 25 to 30 years. And the work, general workmanship warranties are anywhere between two to five years. Um, we also recommend that you request references and proof of insurance. And additionally, we recommend you let the installers who you connect with through Solar Alberta help you find some financing as well, because that's usually a service that they offer. And the financing question can usually be addressed in a wide variety of ways that many installers are familiar with. But again, at the end of the day, really would uh, encourage all of you to talk with an installer. And uh, you can find that through our directory on www.solaralberta.ca. All right, awesome. Uh, so thanks so much, guys. That was all that we um, had to share today. Um, and I'm, I'm happy to pass the mic now to Heather um, in order to facilitate the uh, Q&A here. Wonderful. Well, thank you both for the presentation. I really appreciate it. Just a reminder to everybody who is attending that I'm going to be using the Zoom Q&A box rather than the chat to respond to your questions. Uh, so please put them in the Q&A box, not the chat, and also use the upvote feature with the little thumbs up sign to advance questions that you are particularly interested in. So without further ado, let's dive in as we've got a long list of questions here for you. Uh, Kirk saying, I'm installing solar on a new build residential in Rocky View County. To the best of my knowledge, there are no municipal, federal or provincial grants in Alberta for uh, solar installations on new build residential. Am I correct? If so, is there any one lobbying or anyone, any lobbying being done to change this? Um, you folks want to comment on that at all? I, I don't think that's either of your area of expertise, the financing piece. I know Nick was recommending that uh, you approach a lot of our solar installer members to talk about that. Um, I think you are correct. I don't think Canada Greener Homes Grant does apply for new builds, if I'm not mistaken. And I think SEEP does often require at least six months. Um, so I'll double check that. Um, that said, uh, there are other options. And as the, um, I will say, as the, uh, in sh uh, the home um, interest rates start to come down again, there will be some options. Because I know when we purchased a new home, the interest rates were actually so low we just tucked our solar in with our home purchase as an improvement. So that is one option for folks to consider if they're doing a new home uh, and they want to do it through their home mortgage. Um, but yeah, we're not lobbying on that right now, Kirk. If that's something you think Solar Alberta should be lobbying on, we would certainly consider it. Um, it's not, uh, we usually kind of pick some key areas to advocate on. You can see those on our website, but if you have feedback about that, happy to consider the new build component. We do have a lot of members who are working directly with green builders to produce turnkey solutions where the solar is already integrated. Um, so that is another option to consider for a new build is, is a builder who puts solar right in. <laughs> and then they can sort of jump through all that and you're just dealing with the final bill at the end of the day. So um, that's another option to consider. Anything further to add, Nick or Maham, on that topic? Yeah, new builds are, are definitely a tricky one because most government money is interested in kind of incentivizing um, people to fix up and retrofit older buildings. Maybe, sorry, maybe the only thing on that is, um, I would say even if there's no kind of free money out there right now in the forms of grants, um, look into financing as well. But I, I still would encourage you to look into the cost of solar for your home because you might be surprised how low it's come um, mm -hmm. just on an absolute basis. So even though, you know, you might not have that free money, it still might make sense from a dollars and cents point of view, even without those grants. And that's what we're seeing on utility scale basis is, you know, those are... Um, 
grants free, right? Mm -hmm. Interesting. Um, and I suspect there are some folks popping some info in the chat as well to complement our, our uh, comments here. So Jenny says there, is the Canada Greener Home Grant going to finish in March 2024? Well, Jenny, we haven't seen that date. Uh, so if anyone has seen that date specifically, please send it my way. What I have seen is I've seen comments from the minister indicating that the money was moving quicker than expected. I have also recently heard comments from the minister, uh, Minister Wilkinson, that indicate uh, there's strong consideration for refinancing that. So I do not have any information stating factually that it's going to run out in March, but I have seen a lot of people throwing that date around. So I am looking for that reference. Um, I will say that we do know for a fact that the money was going faster than expected, which is why we have an advocacy campaign on our website asking for that program to be refinanced. So please join us in that request, but I can't speak to any specific dates because I haven't seen that source of information myself. Nick, Maham, have either of you seen any specific dates in the materials you've looked at? I think there's a lot of speculation there, but I haven't seen the exact reference. Okay. So there we go. If anyone has an exact reference, do send it our way. But otherwise, it sounds like things are just moving faster than expected. Um, Kirk, I'm installing solar. Oh, it looks like we're on a new build question again. Sorry, I think we answered that one and it, then it got tucked away. Will, what happens if you have a solar system installed on your home to meet 100% consumption? but your electrical needs drop due to various reasons, energy upgrades, such as better insulation, hybrid water heater, et cetera. Will the utility require you to turn off modules or scale back generation? Um, yeah, good question. Nick, do you wanna to touch on that? I know you were presenting on that a little bit. Yeah, sure. Um, so that's a really good question. In my experience, um, my answer is probably it's small enough that if your if your consumption reduces in the future, then probably no one is going to notice and um, you'll probably be okay. Again, I'm using very loose language here because in the interconnection agreements with um, your your distribution company, so Fortis, Max, Sepcor, someone else, there's probably language written by lawyers in there that uh, might say they reserve the rights to do certain things in the future. Um, but again, in my own experience, I'm not sure if anyone else has experience out there, but I would doubt that they are looking that closely necessarily. So um, the thing that they look most closely at is, you know, at the time of installation, how much are you using? And your installer will kind of size the system based off of that. Yeah, that's my understanding as well, is the sizing is really just based on the initial decision and then changes you make after that. Um, it's not like come, anyone's coming to hunt you down. And there's nothing in the microgeneration regulation that says you can't make credit or money on your system. Um, it's just around sizing, the original sizing. So um, yeah, I don't think that that is something I've ever heard of ever happening, but folks can definitely correct us if we're wrong. <laughs> uh, maybe you have a particularly unique setup. Uh, Josephine, I live in a high rise apartment building, nine stories. I'm advocating to put solar panels on the roof. I am on the condo board and want to influence what's the best way to describe the promotion. So first of all, we actually have a session at lunch this week specifically for multi family uh, units. So please join us for that and um, you'll learn more. Uh, we also have a, a web webinar on our YouTube channel called Solar the Good Neighbor, and it gives you a lot of uh, helpful information when you're talking to your condo board or others about solar and how it doesn't smell and it doesn't make noise and there's nobody coming to operate it. It's just kind of sitting there as a very pleasant, quiet neighbor. <laughs> and so you could definitely use that presentation. We created it just for people like you, Josephine, who are trying to um, explain to their neighbors that it's, it's actually a lovely thing. But do come to our multifamily session this week. Anything you want to add on that, Nick or Maham, before we move on? All right, Joey says, if I can challenge the current slide. Okay, so, okay, we're gonna have a slide challenge here. Uh, if you join Solar Club, you do offset all of your transmission and distribution charges 
and franchise fees I do for eight months a year with a zero or negative bill. So it, yeah, there are some people who do. Um, it really shouldn't, <laughs> shouldn't be everyone's expectation. Um, that's certainly not typically uh, what's in mind. And, and people who are pretending you don't pay any bills ever again, that's usually pretty misleading. So um, it's wonderful that your size big enough and using such little electricity that that uh, with the solar uh, specific pricing that you're having that benefit, but it shouldn't really be an expectation. Um, and we do worry about installers who uh, mislead folks with that type of expectation. So just be cautious not to uh, buy into any false advertising. Anything you want to add on that, uh, Mikram Maham? Yeah, I may just add, I think that's, um, so there's a lot of asterisks when it comes to modeling and financial modeling and all of that. And that's where I really, I, I think the value, if I were to do it myself, is, you know, ask different installers for quotes, ask them how the sausage is made when they're doing their financial modeling for payback and see how they, um, for your particular system and your particular case, um, expect your paybacks to be because yeah it's not uh, one size fits all there there's a lot of I guess science to it which keep people like me employed um, but yeah I would highly encourage that's why talk to installers ask some questions talk to a few different installers that's the best thing I think you can do there mm -hmm. yeah I, I think there's a big difference too between um, so sometimes you make enough credit that it would cover that, but those charges are still technically there. So you're not actually making that as profit. You're just using your credits towards that charge that is still fixed and is still there. So there's still transaction occurring, but yeah, no, thank you. It's good to know some of you are, are doing so well by your solar specific pricing plans. That's wonderful. Um, Angelique says, could you explain a bit about selling carbon offsets as a micro generator? Um, we do actually have two presentations about that in our YouTube channel. So I encourage you to uh, search YouTube for solar Alberta carbon offsets. Um, it, I guess the short answer, I'll, I'll take a stab at that and then you two could elaborate if you'd like. Short answer is if you're selling offsets, you're selling the green attribute. So you're producing electricity, but you're no longer producing green electricity. So if you are adopting solar primarily to save money, then carbon offsets will help with that. Uh, if you are adopting solar because you're trying to do something that's good for the environment, if you sell your carbon offsets, you are no longer doing something that's good for the environment. So it's a toss up. Um, and I don't wanna judge anyone who's in this for financial reasons. If you need to save on your utility bills, that's very understandable. They're very expensive right now. If you can't afford solar without offset component, also understandable. So no judgment there, but you just need to be aware that you're selling the green component of your solar sector to someone else so that they can essentially emit carbon uh, into the atmosphere. Um, Nick, Maham, anything to add on carbon offsets? Okay. But yeah, definitely check out our two much more comprehensive webinars on that topic because it's very interesting. Um, for sure. Uh, Chris writes here, many smaller towns in Alberta struggle with supporting solar and home, uh, sorry, supporting solar and as a homeowner, one can spend an inordinate amount of time getting approvals. <laughs> Any recommendations of resources and approaches to get the admin of a smaller town on board? Uh, so questions around <laughs> jumping through the various hoops. Do you two have any thoughts on that you'd like to share? I feel like it's um, it's getting better over time for sure. I mean, I can I can say that there's been a few examples recently where um, municipalities of various sizes have tried to actively look inwards and see how they can sort of move the approvals process along. I know that in uh, the city of Calgary, there's been um, quite some attention paid to how we can get uh, permits for uh, multiple residential aspects, including home improvements moving along faster. Um, but in terms of resources and approaches, 
used to get the admin of a smaller town on board. I don't know if I have any specific um, sort of actions to add there, except for, you know, be be more of an advocate, um, speak up at town halls and um, raise your concerns at every forum that you have access to. And obviously, ultimately, vote for people who seem to live by the same sort of, you know, political ideas and philosophies that um, you care about. And hopefully, um, you know, in no time, we should we should see the needle moving on that uh, farther than it already has. But signs are encouraging, I would say, for for now in Alberta. Yeah, I will add that our partner, the Municipal Climate Change Action Center, does have a solar friendly municipalities toolbook or handbook. So if you check out their website, that's MCCAC, a Municipal Climate Change Action Center, solar friendly municipalities, there might be some tools there that are useful uh, in your hometown. Anything you wanted to add as well, Nick? Yeah, yeah, I would say those are great avenues. So maybe the only other thing I would add is, um... I think it's good to have a conversation and ask them like, hey, why are you guys concerned? And like, what are the issues here? Because I know as an engineer, like I have a hammer and I just want to hit everything with my hammer, but I think it's an issue sometimes of education as well and misunderstandings or uh, misinterpretations. So I think it does help sometimes if you're able to ask like, hey, like, why are you guys concerned? Is it about you can't use, you can't farm farmlands um, after you put in solar? Well, there's things like agrivoltaics. So I think it's about opening that conversation and um, yeah, finding resources to support that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. And I think we have time for one more question today and then I'm gonna encourage folks to go to solaralberta.ca and send us your questions, office at solaralberta.ca. Um, so Dennis is, is saying, can a homeowner feedback more kilowatt hours per year than they actually use. So the short answer is yes. The long answer is they shouldn't be sized that way. So <laughs> when, as Nick and Maham were explaining, when, they, when you're initially um, given a design by a solar installer, uh, it should be sized to your expected usage. Um, then if you happen to use less than that because you're super efficient and you're thoughtful, yes, you know, you, you can uh, ultimately feedback more than you use. Um, it's, it's really the limitations in the microgen regulation are really just about the initial sizings. I think we touched on that a bit earlier, but is there anything you two want to add to that? No, I will add one thing which is that we hear that frustration every time we do this presentation. So a lot of people are frustrated by the microgeneration regulation, which essentially caps the size of your array. On our website, if you go to support us and advocate with us, we do have a letter that you can send uh, to the government of Alberta with some suggestions, which they've requested for ideas that would spur on more rooftop, um, solar and commercial solar, home and business solar, so they've asked for some ideas. Uh, the throne speech this year mentioned there would be some incentives coming. So one of the ideas that we're asking the government of Alberta to consider is essentially lifting that cap on those who have 200 amp service or less. So um, basically allowing residential and small businesses to maximize their roof space. So if you wanna join us in requesting that change, please do, now's a great time. And uh, I do hear your frustration. I know I, Personally, wasn't able to maximize the, the my own roof, so so I share your frustration. Um, but there is something we can do about it, which is share feedback with the government. And uh, we have spoken directly to the executive director involved with that, who is has said she's very open to feedback. They are looking for ways to improve and enhance the regulations. So thank you all so much for your great questions today. Uh, we want to keep this dialogue going. So do reach out, do connect with us via email, LinkedIn. Um, a big shout out and thanks to Nick and Maham for presenting today. Uh, really couldn't do this without our wonderful past and current board members. Uh, they're wonderful contributors. Thanks to all of our huge audience. We had a great turnout. And of course, to Spot Power, Darren, thanks for joining us and supporting this session. So great to have you with us as, as always. And Enbridge, who sponsored the whole show. So thank you both very much. Have a wonderful day. And I hope to see you all tomorrow morning, bright and early, for our next session.